Kathleen McGivern, and I'm Miserastic, and welcome to the podcast, season two, episode thirty-one. Woo! All right. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about five art on a cart tips. I've been noticing that a lot of teachers are teaching art on a cart, or have been losing their classrooms, um, probably to do with some COVID protocols. Instead of having kids wander through schools, I think. It seems like a lot of districts are having the teachers move instead, so it's less bodies moving. Anyway, or whatever the reason is, it's not the greatest situation, but it happens. Um, I've been there. I've done that. I've lived the art on a cart life. Um, Also, pre a lot of um, overhead projector uh, days. Um, and I'll talk about that later. <laughs> but uh, anyways, so I'm here with my five art on a cart uh, tips for you that you can implement into your cart life to make it a little easier. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Now, before we begin, make sure that you sign up right now for my free Making Art with Kids challenge where I challenge you to make art with kids and I'm taking all kinds of pressure off because I'm offering a free art lesson that will teach line art and felt marker painting. So there's no excuse for not making this happen. Dude, you're going to love it because it's going to come with the lesson plan, handout, literally everything that you need to teach a gecko line art project. And best of all, you will walk away confident And your students are going to love it. So check it out by going to www.artasticcollective.com forward slash challenge right now and sign up for this free challenge. It's for anybody who teaches kids, whether you're a general classroom teacher, homeschool parent, art teacher, dive on in. It's there for you. It's a fabulous Prodi resource. Okay, so let's dive on into five art on a cart tips that you can simply and easily do. So I taught art on a cart for a couple years and it was a challenge and I definitely learned a lot from that process. So keeping it simple and just picking a limited amount of mediums that can be used with endless possibilities um, is very helpful and then you can just start pushing that art cart. All right, tip number one is to keep your art mediums simplified. Do not try and explore everything. Um, you're going to a different space and there is setup involved, there's cleanup time. Um, it means that instruction is a lot shorter than it would you would like it to be, right? Um, so definitely keep your mediums, your art mediums simple and use four art mediums for all projects. That sounds super limited, limiting, but you can really, um, you can use combination of mediums in a project. You can really amplify and be creative with how you use these mediums. And then use those mediums for all our projects and be be creative on how you use them and instruct them. I would use wax crayons, felt markers, watercolor paints, and oil pastels for all your art projects that you do. And hopefully students can use their own wax crayons and markers so that you don't have to wheel those around. But if not, it'll be okay to take those two. They don't take a lot of room and wax crayons. Like I don't color, I don't separate colors. I just can't guys. I'm not one of those, I just can't. I know some people that is how they organize, but I just can't be bothered. It's just like I have so much time in a day and I don't want to organize in colors. I've never had a problem with kids digging through a small container. Like, I honestly make them all share at a table, just digging through a tiny little container that I get at dollar stores. <laughs> and they all share it. There's never a problem. Um, and they always seem to find the colors. Uh, no matter whether it's oil pastel or whatever. And I know that makes the oil pastels dirty, but it is fine. It always ends up fine. It always ends It does. Anyway, so that's my thing on that. I just <laughs> dump them in. <laughs> Listen, I'm very nitpicky on some things, but that I am not. So I guess we all have our own things, but I just, I don't want to, I I don't want to maintain that. Okay, anyways, moving on. So what I'm saying is, if you have like six table groups on average, have six containers of wax crayons, six containers of felt markers, 
um, the felt marker container will have to be a little bit bigger. One set of watercolor paints and um, if you don't want to dump, if you want to have the oil pastels in their boxes, original boxes, then have one set of that or dump them into like six containers. <laughs> and then use those mediums uh, for everything you do. So hopefully you can, um, hopefully students can use their own wax crayons and markers because it's again beneficial that you don't have to take those around. Just put them all the supplies into those containers, right? So you have your six containers and what I used to do is I used to just stack them inside like a dishwasher container that I'd put on my cart, right? So I'd have those, you know like those plastic dishwasher uh, tubs? Um, that's what I would use. And I would just stack them in there. I could do like three high of the containers of wax crayons and you'd have two stacks of the thing, two stacks of the wax crayons, etc. Okay, so like really um, capitalize on vertical space if you can. So then put your supplies into containers, stack them, and then that way you can just really um, traverse the hallways really quickly without them just spilling all over the place or having to stick them back into the original boxes. That's I think why I used to do this is because I didn't have a classroom. Um, so I had to just, I started off art on a cart and I just, I think that's why I stuck to that and I just never changed even when I got a classroom. <laughs> so these mediums are easy to wheel around and easy to clean. So um, that's why I like these ones is just because they're easy to clean. I don't like for painting, watercolor paints and felt marker painting, that's totally perfect. And then you don't have to worry about like cleaning up or if classrooms have carpet in them, which is always gross. <laughs> I used to have a carpet in my classroom, not a full carpet in the classroom, I'll be honest. <laughs> Until <laughs> gross things happened. <laughs> and then, ooh, I got rid of it. Anyways, so that is that. So keep them simplified. Next is keep old folders. Oh my gosh, this is one of my treasured things that... I got, I started this when I had an art on a cart and then 10 years later still used the exact same ones. Okay, ready for it? So basically there's no time to wipe tables and some teachers are really nitpicky about their tables getting dirty even though um, like you could wipe them. But um, I never, every classroom I went to they were, they did not want me getting their desks dirty. So, and then as an artist I, <laughs> I'm a creative disaster. So anyways, I did this. So what I did was I kept, so one day they were, I guess in the office, recycling old folders and they just had like random numbers on the top. So I just cut those off that tab where people write on and then like just filing cabinet ones, filing cabinet folders. I think these ones were 11 by 17 because they were a really nice size. Um, and I kept that whole set. So what I do is you basically just unfold them and when you unfold them there are sufficient size for creating on with enough boundary around and they are almost the same size of like a kid's desk if you have those like boring rectangle desks from like the 90s um still then that is what i'm talking about <laughs> um so those desks uh yeah i would definitely just fit perfectly on those ones okay and then they get messy you can not even worry about what happens to them. Like, let them go for it. Um, and then just fold them back up and then put them back on a cart. And you only need a set that is for however, for your big, it's basically for your biggest class set. So I always had classes, I think the most is always 30. So then I would have always 30 on hand, maybe one for me. So 31, 32, just, to, just in case. Um, you fold them back up, you put them back on the cart. Like honestly, like who cares what gets on it? They're always fine. They never seem to deteriorate, like ever. Like I've done paper mache on them. I've done, I've lots of kids have accidentally dumped like water all over them. And then they're always fine after, right? The water dries, they're still good to go. And I use them. I've I had the same set forever. It was amazing. So that was one of the greatest hacks I've used in my teaching career. So using folders, they fold up nicely in half, they open, they cover a desk, boom. There's like very little cleanup and most of the time you don't even need to wipe tables. Okay, having an inbox and an outbox. You gotta keep your bins simple. 
do you want to keep your bin simple? No, ideally I'd like have my days of the week bins. I'd have like all, I'd have sketchbook bins. I'd have one for every class that I teach. What, okay. Um, you don't have a classroom, unfortunately. So you have to keep the space to, um, you basically have to be very mindful of the space that you do have, which is a car. So, um, what I did is I just kept one bin for work being collected, one bin for work you're handing back. Um, so inbox, outbox. I would consider color coding your teachers or classes and like you can even put like a little cheat sheet and just tape it to your cart. Um, so, and then have like your like little container of like colored markers or if you're like a flare person, like grab your flare pens, go for this. I just got on that bandwagon and I bought them and I'm like, ah, I'm not gonna like these, these are just pens. But dude, they changed my life. Okay. Anyways, um, so what I'm saying is you take as kids are coming in and they're handing it into the inbox, or you can get a helper to do this. Like there are lots of responsible kids. There's always those kids in the classroom that this would be their job and they would love it. And they would do a much better job than you. Okay, so grab that that kid. This could be their job, and they can just dot the back of the work at as the kids are handing it in. So kid passes the work, the kid flips it over to the back, puts just a small dot, maybe in the bottom right corner of a color. That's it, a felt washable Crayola felt marker color. Red, 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 red. One class is all red. Another class is all purple. Another class is all blue. And they're all color coded that way. So that way, if a kid forgets to um, label the work or they don't, you know, they put the wrong classroom number, they don't know how to spell their teacher's name, they can't spell yet. They can't write yet. Whatever the case is, there's a whole bunch of cases. They just forget because it is what it is. And that happens too. At least you'll have a guess of where to start. You'll at least know what class to send that back to. And the teacher can figure it out. Okay? So that's my suggestion for that. Um, okay, so the next one is having a field easel and drawing paper. And I might be dating myself here. When, okay, so when I started teaching on art on a cart, like only one classroom had an Elmo and that was like mind blowing to me um, with the, you know, connected to an overhead projector. Uh, <laughs> so if like a classroom has it, has an overhead projector, like a digital overhead projector, you're all good. Just teach under the classroom's camera, okay? And then give that surface a nice courtesy Lysol wipe before you leave. Um, that would be nice. I... I was never, uh, uh, see, like, that's where I go different. Like, I don't particularly like organizing oil pastels, but if I come in and my desk is, like, disastrous, left by somebody else, that would, that would drive me nuts. Even though I had no reason to be upset about that because I wasn't there and they were. <laughs> but it would bother me in my head. I wouldn't say it out loud. I'm just saying it to you. Anyways, so give it a nice courtesy uh, Lysol wipe before you leave to get rid of any mediums and then they'll be happy and pleased to let you use that camera um, and digital projector. Okay, courtesy wipe, um, spritz it with some lavender. Just kidding, don't do that. But maybe if they were, uh, might make, make them in a very good mood for the rest of their day. <laughs> okay, so however, the point of this is that if you don't have a luxury of having an overhead projector like I didn't, Okay, I did not have that luxury in any classroom except for one, um, probably because it was 10 years ago. But anyways, what I'm saying is I used a field easel. So I, I still have it. It was in my, my studio here for the longest time. I finally just got a real easel for the first time. But I used my field easel that I got when I was like 10 years old. Um, I would, it was telescoping, right? It's a field easel, it opens up. Um, I had an MDF board, I would stick that in there and I would just um, use a big clip a big fold black fold back clip and I would just clip on my paper onto that um, and I would use my large drawing paper for demonstrations on the field easel I'm going to the next class I would just fold it up pop it on the cart and roll on off okay so then I would have kids sit close to me like carpet time and did my demonstrations that way so that was kind of how I did it um, because I didn't have the option of having a cart and sometimes I whiteboard I don't know I'm not really big on drawing on whiteboard and doing art demonstrations on a whiteboard because a whiteboard marker does not really express the same uh, as other things, right? So I would take a graphite stick, like a big graphite pencil, like a thick one, and that was what I would draw with on my big drawing paper. Okay, next one, choice-based art. 
my tip to you is to do a lot of choice-based art. Remember, my theme for season two is flexible mediums and choice-based art. <laughs> because we need to survive. I, we're tired. And so are the kids. So let's have some fun. Plus, again, I have a feeling that's the way things are going. It's just my senses. So choice-based art with the kids. Um, this is going to take a lot of pressure off of you in terms of planning and coming up with ideas for everything. So if you need a break, pull a prompt out of your prompt jar and like let kids pick their own mediums and create. Art on a cart isn't easy and the time between classes is nearly impossible. So keep your sanity, keep it flexible, keep it simple. And if you need to, give the power to your students and they're going to love you for it. Now, if you just need to simplify your life, I have recently released my art on a cart resource that includes 10, sorry, bigger than that, 20 art lessons and 10 art activities or art activities for art teachers. So prep for your art on a cart journey like a pro with the Mizzertastic ready-made art on a cart 20 art lessons and 10 art activities, art resource for art teachers. So it's a complete art resource that includes 20 art lessons and 10 art activities and the assessment for your cart and art teacher binder. So you can all pop it all into your binder on your cart and just go. And that'll be your plan for a very long time. You can do the same lesson at all kinds of ages and just adjust the complexity of it and mediums. So this is a resource that's going to help you plan and be ready forever like a pro in like under 10 minutes. It's a one and done resource for your mobile art classroom and for art teachers to help you be ready for art teaching on a cart with only four art mediums. All of the lessons, all 20, only require you to have four art mediums or even better is that it all has flexible options. So you can just sub out any of those mediums and just change it to something different for flexible options that meet your own needs. Um, the 10 activities are choice-based, use whatever you want. So that is a sweet, sweet deal for art on a cart life. So you never have to worry about searching for art lessons anymore on Pinterest or like asking Facebook, you know, groups say like, yo, I need some art on a cart ideas and you get some that are good and not a lot of pictures. Just be done with it, 10 minutes, click up a button. This resource has everything that you will need for stress-free and worry-free art planning, including non-editable art lessons and art activities. You can use this art on a cart resource and art lessons with, again, only four mediums or your choice art mediums. It's amazing, honestly. Um, there's a full, i done a YouTube video on this. You can see what it looks like beforehand. Or if you go to the resource link, I'll have a link in the description of this podcast here. You can, and the link to the YouTube channel will be on the listing as well. But anyways, in the link, I'll put the link to the listing of this resource in my Teachers Pay Teachers store in the podcast show notes or um, in the description of this podcast. If you just look right now, you'll find it. And um, on that listing, you're going to see a little short preview. It's going to have some pictures of what the art lessons are going to be done. Um, what art lessons are going to be done, what it includes, all that jazz. It's 20 art lessons. Some are inspired by artists. Some are inspired by the elements and principles. It's fabulous. It's complete. It's flexible, my friend. You can just be one and done. Okay, so check it out right now. Art on a cart. Ms. Artastic. I got you, my friend. All right, so that's it for this episode. Next week, uh, well, not next week, but the week after. It's bi-weekly here. So in a couple weeks, I will be talking. My next episode will be on art subtubs and how to prep your art subtub. And I'm going to give you five tips for that because art subtubs, super important. I hate worrying about planning when I'm sick or I'm gone, okay? So this is going to solve that for you. And you're going to be ready to... Have an art sub in like a pro. All right, so this is Ms. Ar uh, Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, signing off. <laughs>